Okay, well, as well as being a professional poker player, you also do pretty well on the horses, I'm told. Um, is it something you've diversified into, or is it something that you've been doing in parallel for quite a while? Oh, definitely in parallel. There's no way I could, at the moment, do racing full time. Um, and there's no way that it'd be worth it for me to do it. I just trained, at one point when I was trying to do a lot of form study, it was getting away with my poker, for sure. I'd be, if, if one gets chinned at, uh, over six furlongs at Chelmsford, it, even if I only had like a couple hundred quid on it, it would, it would tilt me that much that my poker session would like, be odds on to be a fail because it would get in my head. So now I've, you have to kind of separate them as well. Even though you're doing it parallel, you've got to treat them both as separate entities and not get, not get them mixed up, otherwise they'll both end up going tits up. Now you said if I only had a couple of hundred quid on it, now to some people that might seem like quite a big bet. So what sort of figures do you punt in on the horses? Um, it dep my punting strategy is a lot different to a lot of people who punt for a living. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be having five, six bets a day, I think, a lot of them. Whereas I'll have probably one or two a week, especially because most of the stuff I bet on is flat. So for now in the winter, probably one every two weeks. But I'll have big bets, like, I don't know, like big-ish, like max bet probably two or three K. Um, medium bet like 300 and then anywhere in between but I've got to I've just got to judge on the strength the, the, the phone calls I get I've got to judge them how strong they are and make my mind up then how strong I'm going to go no one ever says oh this is a max bet or well sometimes you get the old rocket emoji and you know, you, you know you've got to get your head down right now I, I've you preempted my next question because I'm guessing that you don't spend hours in the form book no uh, so what is your <laughs> no edge? time what is your edge just friends I know who, who who know people in yards basically that I've met across from poker and from other things. Um, just telling me that they've got a two year old there that's better than the one that won yesterday by four, you know. And you can just smash onto it. Six or seven, you know it's gonna you have know, whatever you want on it and if you wanna trade them off at seven to four when they go off you can. If not, just let them ride and the so, the, 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 the edge in poker is knowing more than everyone else. The edge in life's knowing more than everyone else. The edge in racing is knowing more than everybody else. So if you the the biggest edge is knowing something the bookies don't is unraced two year olds or or what's improved for the wind up or what's gonna what's trying today. You know, if you know that before everyone else, you'll always be in, in profit. Yeah, that's a, but anyone that's been in racing for any period of time knows there's a hell of a lot of chaff out there with the wheat. How long mm. does it take you to source out the good stuff from the bad stuff? Um. Well, the guys who the guys who mark my card have been doing it loads twenty five years, so they they do that and then just process the information they all hear. Because around Newmarket, you, everyone's you hear whispers every day about stuff. But then over the years, you just get to learn like who your favourite sources are, who the who the ones the reliable ones are, who's not to be trusted, and you know you just have to do it like that. It's just intuition, and then you know you you know. Not obviously not all going to win, but you know you've got a good edge that way. And and do they do it because Rick's a good bloke, or do they do it because they? No, they get it? no, they get the, they get the beak sweat. You know, everyone has to get the beak sweat in the game. That's how it works. So when you're right, you you don't have to pick your own winners, but do you still I, I still do, yeah, yeah, you're still gambling. I still try, yeah, you're still gambling. And reference point for the older people that are watching, reference point got beat first time out and went on to win the derby. So these super two euros do get yeah. beat. When you have a bad losing run, what's a, is it a different feeling and mindset to when you have a bad losing run at poker? Um, that's a hard question, actually. No, it, it used to be, but now it's kind of the merging together where I'm being less results oriented and I'm just being I'm doing the right thing, having the right bets. It'll come good. Shit happens, you know. You'll have runs where you get where the where four out of four out of five will get up by a half a length or a short head or a neck, and then you'll get the other way around where you're getting beat by one that's another one that's off in the race and they pull them out clear a third, you know, and and they've come for that late and you both you both had good bets but theirs are just slightly better on the day, and same as poker you can play. Last night I played um, four o'clock, got to five o'clock, said to text our last inside us. T ready, <laughs> proper Yorkshire textile last. Uh, I said I want to be finished soon. I said I've only got two tables left. I'm not playing very well. I'm knackered. 
I had a skin fall New Year's Day, I shouldn't have really played yesterday, which is the second. Um, and then I ended up winning both tournaments I'd on for like six grand, so uh, uh, I didn't play well at all. I didn't, I couldn't concentrate. I was tired, I was yawning, I was hungry, but I got so lucky last night that the cards fell for me really well and I ended up winning. I've had nights where I've played brilliantly all day and um, lost like every tournament. Now, we, we all know that you can get on with poker because you're playing against somebody else, but it's, everybody knows it's very difficult. If you're back in unraced two-year-olds at Hosing on the all-weather, it's going to be very difficult for you to get your bets on. So, um, how did you do it? Uh, <laughs> I've still got a couple of, well, one, one decent account that I've managed to keep somehow. Um, some people do like the bookies runners, things where you pay like 5% juice and they get you on, stuff like that, and I'll just get on with your friends, I guess. As it, it's not as it's, it would be a lot harder if I was going six bets a day trying to find one that's seven to two that, that I think is probably like a three to one shot I mean it's, messing in small edges has never been worth it for me it's too much hassle I mean you're driving you know, if you want to have like a hundred quid at fours when you think it should be threes you're spending you're spending two hours getting the bet on around all these little shops it's not how much do you value your time you know it's just not worth it you just got to find the big edges and smash as much on, on them as you can. Now you said you said to me when we were talking before we did the interview that you're considering going professional punting on horse racing in maybe three to maybe, five years. Uh, why would you wait that long, and why would you forsake poker because you've done so well at it? Well, the only the only way I'd ever do that, go full time in racing or gambling, is if my edge in poker evaporated. I'm thirty five nearly. And obviously there's guys playing 18, 19 year olds who are just as smart, if not smarter than me. So there's gonna be a time when my brain can't work as fast as it needs to do to make, to make the money I need to make. So when that time comes, I'll look to move into a different sector, but I'm, I'm too, too institutionalized at home and not going to work that I don't think I'll be ever in an office. So it'll be, it'll be something along those lines. But I'm, ha I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to, think that I'll be able to to get into gambling somewhere because I, I, poker is my job but I do love I do love horses that's my my, my first true love I think no. I'd much rather do if I could make the same money at it I'd do horses every day I'd, I'd choose that every day over poker do you ever consider um, investing some of your winnings in a horse um, no a few of my, my mates have got one <laughs> a guy um, a guy Chris Brammer he's, he's really good from the UK he's made millions um, he's got a few horses with um, Archie Watson but um, my mate's got a couple with Alan Bailey and Joseph who's, who's in, well who's doing most of the work down there now uh, Joseph Parr um, this training fee is just a fucking nightmare like you know 25, 30 grand a year 40 grand a year some, somewhere it's just it's just ridiculous money like I'd, I'd probably only do it with a few mates and um but it's never really interested me owning horses for whatever reason. Right, now you've talked about your family, you've got three kids, all young. How can you sustain a career betting in a family environment? I mean, a lot of people find that <laughs> difficult to, uh, unless you've got an extremely well, understanding this, missus. This, yeah, well, this office is a help because this is, we're in an office now, it's a converted shed and it's about 20 hours from the house, so the kids don't come in and making noise and kicking off and. I just get to be in my own little space for my however long I'm in here. That helps. Um, she's she's very supportive, yeah, to be honest. She's seen the ups and the downs and knows that this is what I'm best at. Um, well, I don't know. As I said, with maybe moving into other areas of gambling, I don't know how long I've got left in this game before. My brain just totally says, right, you can't play eight tables anymore. When you can't play eight tables anymore, you can only play four or five then you've got to play longer and you're getting older and you know your, your brain's not as sharp at 35, 40 as it was at 20 it's just simple science you know so and of course all the advances in technology and stuff might make it impossible for anyone to play in 10 years because people are learning to play um, game theory optimally which means perfectly in this chosen situation so basically everything becomes more variance then because if everyone knows how to play a position it's just it's all luck then. If everyone knows how to play play well, 
if you get two tennis players who are 100 percent players then what's it going to boil down to who hits the net cord or <laughs> who misses by a whiskey it's going to be all luck now you, you mentioned that then so how does having a family that rely on you for their livelihood affect you mentally when you've got a really difficult, big punting decision to make? Um, it's going to sound callous, but I don't think of them at all when I'm making a punting decision or playing poker at all. If I started thinking about, um, should I do this because we, we might need what, an extension or something, then it's not going to be the right bet to have. I think about... I think about the chance of it winning and what price is. If it's forty percent chance of winning, and I'm getting seven to four. I'm I'm getting involved. If it's if it's fifty percent chance of winning, and I'm getting. Do you know what I mean? I'm getting six to five. Well, a bit bad. I don't mess around with those small edges, but you know what I mean. I want something. I want my bet somewhere. It's sevens, and it should be seven to four. You know, and whatever whatever industry that's in, whatever sector of sport or betting that's in, that's what I try and do. But thankfully, I've met a few good people in racing that that I can take it from there. But as I say, like what I make on racing is tiny compared to poker over the years. So poker is still 95 percent of what my, where my money comes from. Now you, you mentioned that um, your mate Chris Warman was the best player ever, and he nearly went skin at one point. He, yeah, when he staked, when he started staking people. Yeah. yeah. Well, you live in a very nice house. You've everything you've got. You've won. Do you ever worry that you might lose the lot by bad decisions? No. No, not really. It, it's not as. It's not. A lot of the poker kind of public perception of poker, if you've never played it before, it's kind of like the smoky back rooms, you know, like playing Dirty Den against Frank Butcher on uh, East Enders, and someone's got a straight flush, someone's got a royal flush, and they lose the fucking. the Vic or the Archers or whatever, you know? No, it's not It's not so much like that, no. There's, there's a lot of, lot of horizon. You can see on the horizon a lot more than. It's not just over the cliff and you're going to lose everything. It's more of a gradual where you can see after a year whether you're going going that way and you can put the brakes on and do something else you know but no the stakes I'm playing now are a lot smaller than I was 10 years ago probably you know it's just ugh. Sundays used to be like 13 14 thousand buy-ins and now they're like five six thousand and it's not because the games are smaller now it's just because I've learned where my position is and where I can win, and I don't chase big results. I just try and get, try and edge away. You know, if I can make four or five grand a week, lovely. You know, perfect. That'll do me. I'm not, I'm not trying to make the millions and millions and millions every year. Do you know, I'm just trying to swim faster than the sharks, <laughs> faster than the blokes swimming next to me. You know, to avoid the sharks. All right. So you're 35. Now, is your long-term future professional gambling of some description? Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I can't, I can't say it is or not. You never know, you know. But I, I'm happy with... I know that I can adapt to stuff. So if you can adapt to different things and different climates, different people, different situations, pressure, high pressure, low... Do you know, if you can still get stuff done effectively, then I think you can go in any almost any sector and make, it, make an impact. So anybody that thinks they've got those same attributes, have a go as well? Yeah, feel free to tweet me or whatever and... and um, any beginner's questions are always happy to answer and get you started somewhere on a site or small money, you know. I'm not one of these ruthless old, ruthless guys you see who's just trying to nick everyone's money, you know. There's enough where I get it from, I don't need anyone else's. But the smaller the fish are sweeter. Well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Anyway, Rick Trigg, thank you very much. Thanks very much.